Our week this week was about onboarding and orientation. Starting a new job is considered to be one of the most stressful life experiences. So a proper onboarding process that is sensitive to the anxieties and some of the uncertainties that a new employee may face is of utmost importance. Orientation is closely related to the processes of recruitment and selection that preceded and to the process of training and development that is sure to follow. The value of the orientation and the onboarding process lies in the main objective being the integration of the new employee into the organization without delay so that he or she can become an effective employee as soon as possible. The focus of onboarding is to strike a balance between providing information and equipping the new employee with knowledge of the job and the work environment while making a positive long-term impact on the employee that will influence his or her behavior and commitment to the organization. The role players involved in the onboarding process comprise the supervisor, who must ensure that the employees in the section receive all the information necessary to enable them to function as efficiently and effectively as possible. That means to introduce them to new employee, the new employees to co-workers, explaining duties and responsibilities, policies, procedures, rules, taking them to HR, taking them on a tour of the offices and making sure that they know uh, what is expected from them. The head of department has the responsibility to meet all new employees and briefly explain to them the role and responsibilities of the particular department within the organization. The HR department is responsible for issu issues such as the employment contract, compensation, any kind of benefits that the employee would have access to, and the development and monitoring of the success of the orientation program. The mentor or buddy is responsible for assisting the new employee regarding how to operate basic equipment such as photocopiers, telephones, how to deal with emails. They may also demonstrate how to log onto their computers, generate passwords. In other words, just be there in the first couple of days and weeks for any questions that the new employee may have. The union representative is responsible for explaining issues such as disciplinary procedures and how to deal with grievances. Lastly, the new employee should also be involved during the orientation process. They must complete all the evaluation forms, provide informal feedback to the human resource department and their supervisors if requested, Newcomers should participate in all the orientation and onboarding initiatives and indicate whether they have needs that are not being addressed by the current program. In the orientation design, there are a number of processes and steps to be followed. Now, during the pre-employment preparation, this is the first impression that the organization will make. So once the selection process has been finalized, a formal letter of appointment congratulating the employee must be sent to the new employee. The letter should contain a description of the job, the starting salary, salary progression, the grade of the job, terms and conditions, the location, the probationary period, the letter should indicate whether the job offer is conditional upon satisfactory references and medical checks and the form should this should also form part of the onboarding process. On your first day, there should be someone to welcome you, hopefully your line manager. In the letter that you received, you may also give an, or an indication may also be given of your office number and the location of the building that you need to report to, 
parking arrangements, the name and the job title of the person that you will be reporting to, um, the date on which you should start, what you should bring, the welcome pack that the organization will prepare for you will comprise a letter to welcome you. Uh, it will explain the organizational structure. It will give you details on policies and processes. Give a letter of welcome. It's a good idea to include a map of the facility of important telephone numbers. During this particular first day, you will also receive some orientation regarding the organizing of your work. And obviously, you will meet your colleagues. And what other staff and colleagues should be briefed about the new employees and at the very minimum informed about the name of the newcomer, the position that he or she has been appointed in, their background, where they come from, and the date of when they will start. All orientation programs will have administrative arrangements. The office the newcomer will occupy must be prepared for him or her and for their arrival. Basic information um, regarding HR, the signing of contracts, uh, the, the possible benefits and paperwork that still need to be completed, all of this can be dealt with during the orientation and hopefully even during the first day of employment. You should also be made aware of the training that is provided to all newcomers, consideration given to the orientation program, what the program itself will look like, if it is a formal program, um, what the design of the program should be. You can receive an employee workbook uh, through which you can uh, receive meaningful information regarding the organization. Your buddy or mentor. In the design of the orientation program, many organizations assign a buddy or a mentor to a new employee. And this person should be more or less about the same age or grade as the newcomer, who, and they will assist them informally by ask, answering any questions that may arise during the early days. This is a temporary arrangement. The role of the mentor during the onboarding process is, however, very important as this person can assist the newcomer for several months after they have commenced duty. In some cases, buddies are not assigned, but a similar relationship may form naturally between a newcomer and the colleague. There are unfortunately also problems that are associated with orientation. Often, both supervisors and newcomers feel that there is too much emphasis being placed on completing the paperwork and not necessarily on making the new person feel welcome. New employees also relate that during orientation they experience information overload and that there is too much information regarding the organization given to them in too short a period. Unfortunately, most orientation programs also are not formally evaluated and feedback is not solicited from both the trainers as well as the new employees regarding how well this particular program is functioning. And lastly, there is a failure sometimes to engage the new employee in his or her first day and prior to his or her commencement of duty. There is a failure to articulate clear responsibilities. There is a failure to ensure that there is appropriate feedback. There is a failure to engage with the newcomer regularly to determine whether or not any of their needs have changed. In conclusion, the role that the manager has to influence the employee's motivation during the orientation and onboarding process should never be underestimated. A 
manager can create a positive work environment. This can lead to open communication. They can set a good example and give employees feedback about their work and performance. Employees may feel empowered through the orientation process and they can see that there is an adequate emphasis on their development. Through proper introductions to the team, the team will also be uh, stronger and they, they will feel as though they are a cohesive team where working towards the achievement of a particular organizational objective. So in this lecture, we focused on what onboarding and orientation means. We looked at the role players and we also looked at some of the important components in the design of an orientation program. Good luck with the rest of the week.